We are officially done fall lambing. This fork is like probably 60 years old. Figured out my final lambing results from that group. Are you the new queen? Yes, you are. Oh, hello. So stupid. Good morning, it's Monday, another work week. This weekend uh, we had, it was a great weekend. I had my, my little Billy baby born, which is so exciting. I still haven't gone through my weaning weights that I took probably darn near a month ago now. And I need to make some pretty big decisions today or tomorrow, today probably. Um, I wanna evaluate udders and um, go through any information I have based on the weaning information. I wanna get at that because I wanna run those lambs through uh, this morning still and sort my rams and my rams and females and even pick a few really good replacements. So, um, and in doing that, I have to vaccinate them and do all the things. No new lambs this morning again. I don't know what's going on with these ewes. Today is day 21, so I use cedars, they should be done by day 21. So these girls are now officially overdue. I would imagine the next day or two, they will be, they will be done. There's only three left. A really nice set of twins, which means we are down to two left to lamb. I am going to rearrange some pens. We're filling up real fast here. Uh, I'm going to give the two ewes that are still due just their little pen and I'll pail some water to them. But these guys need a little more room. We just have our group of ewes, the ones that I weaned about a month ago or so, and, um, and the ones that Rebecca scanned that were open last week. And I have a list of ewes that I didn't like the weaning results, results off the lambs. Um, and then just a, a few others that I just had notes written, whether she was slow coming into her milk or whatever, have her. So I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight ewes that are kind of automatic here that I'm gonna ship. And, and all I'm gonna do is run these use through and 
and just do an external exam of the udder if there's any lumps, if there's any um, kind of hard teat canals uh, or anything else I see really lopsided udders, anything that really screams attention. Uh, most of this group are first time lammers that were bred in January for the first time. So likely they probably aren't in rough shape. It was their first lambs, a lot of them. And a lot of them just had singles. So I don't anticipate being a lot of uh, any extras that I'm gonna pull out, but this is what today's all about is to just do that. It won't take us long. Carissa and I are just gonna run them through. And if they are good, they go back into their pen. And if they are gonna get shipped, they just go in their own little pen here. All right. I will start from back here. And scan, see what their data says. Good morning, you guys. We are officially done fall lambing. Right there. So last night I kind of just vacated. Um, we finished sorting the ewes that either are gonna get shipped or stay or wherever they're supposed to be. And then I had a ewe lambing, so I ran down here and delivered, helped deliver that one. And then uh, it was late enough, I'm like, you know what? She has all that room. She should be able to lamb her last one on her own. And she must have just did it this morning. Hi, good lady. So we are officially done because the other one uh, doesn't have an udder. Like she didn't ever bag up. So whether she she's likely reabsorbed her lambs, which can happen um, like internally, or she aborted very early when, and, and in the big group, so I never really did see it. Uh, or it was just a misscan, which a misdiagnosis, which can happen too. But very, very rarely uh, do I have too many misdiagnoses. Misdiagnoses. This morning I have to hook up my trailer. I have to take three lambs to our processor for the store that I sell lamb to. He said he cannot keep it on the shelf. So that's kind of nice. Um, I haven't been doing my bo the uh, meat boxes with Belinda just because we have just between, she is renovating her barn right now and I've been busy lambing and doing field work. So I have to really pick and choose when I want to do like my side little project. Anyway, I'll catch up with you guys in a few hours. It is afternoon already and uh, I spent the rest of the morning kind of putting lambs and mums giving them a whole nother pen and making the first pen bigger. They look so good and so happy. And I'm also gonna go through all their data to see how this lambing group actually performed. I feel like we did really good. I think I'd be in around that two lambs per you, which uh, very, very happy with that in, a, in an April breed. 
Uh, those tend to be, the April breed and the July breed tend to be um, kind of hit and miss with, with multiples. So anyway, that is good and I will take you through that. But first, I have to clean out my very last pen. It is long overdue. The pen is so deep that I yesterday when I was trying to sort use, um, the, the gates were the gates were almost impossible to open and close because the manure just got high enough. Now when I say the manure is like deep and high, it is always clean on top. We always make sure that the top is clean. Um, and then the, the stuff underneath is l literally compost. It's, it'll be dry and it'll be very packed. Uh, so that part doesn't really touch the animal's body. So when I say deep, it's more, it's ma management wise, I hate it. Um, but for animal health and comfort, it actually, it's actually quite nice to have a pack for them because it's a little more comfortable. Um, but I do always worry about um, moisture because when that pack and litter gets a little bit wet or moist, uh, and they're, because their noses, when they lay down at night, their noses are right on that litter, you have to make sure that's really dry and clean for them because that's where they can pick up any respiratory issues off that litter or even... Um, if they're just drying up, which that's not the pen that I dry them up, but even that they can develop some bacteria from the litter and it can enter those uh, teats that are healing up so from nursing. So just things like that. That's uh, kind of manure management and uh, it's just long overdue because I did not have the space on my pad and now I have the space. Uh, so I'm going to use it and do that today. Um, I'll, I'll take little clips here and there, but you've I feel like every other video is another manure cleaning out video, but it is part of part of the cycle. So uh, anyway, that is today's agenda. And when I'm done, we'll go through, depending on how late it is tonight, I'll go through those numbers. If it's too late, I'll just go through it in the morning and share that with you guys. Okay. Okay, just on the final, kind of final strokes, cleaning up the manure that I, you know, spilt into the manger and can't get on the sides. I feel like it takes me longer to do this part than to actually clean out the manure. This, this fork is like probably 60 years old, but I still use it.
It's clean. Really always wanted to do this, so. Before. Ta-da! All right, now what I'm gonna do is these ewes that I'm gonna ship tomorrow in this pen are gonna come right in here. I'm gonna shut the water gate and then that pen that I've kind of squished up in the middle there, they're gonna take up the rest of the three quarters of this pen until tomorrow they'll get this whole side and then uh, the ewes in the center alley will go back into their pen. So I'm just gonna rearrange some pens right now. Good morning, you guys. I was so exhausted last night. I think I just hit that post slamming wall of getting up really early, staying up really late, and then cleaning out that barn yesterday. And that pen was so deep that the um, shoveling requirements took a little bit out of me. And uh, just feeling my age this morning. I have my Gallagher all set up and I did go through and figured out, um, figured out my final lambing results from that group. And I think for an April, an April breed, I think we did really good. Um, so in this group, I had 108 that were scan pregnant and 107 lambs. So that right up, right away is really good. Sometimes I have early abortions, some that I see and some that I don't see, and I had no early abortions. So vaccination program is working, which is so good. Uh, this group is full of a lot of mature use so they should have really good immunity anyway right now like they've probably whatever bugs they've had especially abortion bugs is through them and they have uh titers to kind of help fight that so that's really good um we had 215 lambs born out of those 107 ewes which is just over two lambs per ewe which has always been kind of my goal 34 ewes had singles 49 ewes had twins 15 ewes had triplets, 7 ewes had quads, and 2 ewes had quints. So that's crazy for April breeding, I, I would say. A lot of people ask, you know, how are you getting these multiples? And I still, I really do trace it back to um, the breed, the breed potential, and the, uh, the feeding program. So the ones that had the multiples are my, my, a lot of them were my original steel use, so they're, and also, it's also age, so these girls are, you know, they're pushing, I bought them in 2015, they're probably a year old, so they're, they're probably six, six years old, six or seven years old, they do have potential of giving me a lot more multiples, so they are the ones that I could see in my data that were really giving me those multiples. Uh, so. Out of the 215 lambs that were born, 196 are alive today. We've lost 19, do not have a heartbeat today. Um, so nine of those 19 were stillborn, so they were born not alive. Three were born just really weak, so they never, they were just not a real viable lamb for whatever reason, something happened. And then six have died since then. So they either died in the first 24 hours or they've died uh, a couple days later for whatever reasons. By the time I see them, they're already gone, so I don't know what they died of. Uh, probably doing postmortems would help in that, and uh, I just haven't made a common practice to do that, but I really should maybe take a class on how to do a really good postmortem on a lamb, see if I can see anything of why they would die you know when they look good and they're tagged anyway so that's that's the results and i'm really proud of it uh every group's getting every group you know has some wins and some fails but i always say the fails i'm always learning some stuff from it now what i want to do is run in there i have those two ewes that were the last to lamb with their singles they are still in their lambing pen i want to take them out and then i will show you 
how they all look. Everybody's bonded and it's just the greatest feeling when you have no more lambing jugs set up and everybody's just running around and happy. So I'd like to show you that. Say hi! Are you doing good? You don't love me as much as my little cinnamon does. Say hello to the world, Bella! Are you gonna be the queen? Are you the new queen? Are you the new queen? Yes, you are. Oh, hello! My queen. Oh, you're such a guy! She's so fluffy! Hi. Oh yes, you love your snuggles too. You try to fight my love, but you love it. Okay, let's go see mom. Where is mom? She's over there. She's over by the water. So before I put the camera away, I wanted to show you what can happen literally in the blink of an eye when I was standing over there tearing down those pens. I kind of heard some rustling up here. Well, this mess came from the boys broke out. They broke into the pen behind them, which is the ewes that I'm prepping to get bred in two weeks, not today. Not any day before two weeks because in two weeks that actually matches up to about March 12th is when I kind of want these guys to start lambing. The problem with starting to lamb before March 12th in this barn, we have a very, very high chance that it's really cold. And I ran into this two years ago when I bred the first week of October. They started lambing the last week of February and it was awful. I lost. I lost lambs because it was so cold and it is the absolute worst thing <laughs> that could have happened. And they were only in there for like 20 minutes, probably half an hour, but they were jumping and breeding like crazy. So I'm praying I got them out in time. This is the worst. This is why I never like putting my unbred ewes in the pen right beside the boys. I usually have my bred ones there. Oh. So stupid. So I think how, what I did is I had the, the water gate tied and I always tie it to the upright. So those little metal uprights right there, right there. And I think I was so tired last night when I finished, I tied it to the boards. And the problem is where the boards meet, so in between each of these bunk sections, there's a tiny little opening and they moved the string to that opening, got the string off, opened the gate, shut the gate behind them. So I didn't even notice until I heard the, I heard the rustling and then I was like, what is that? Sheep make a really weird sound when they're up to no good. Like I know something's going on. I can be in the house. Mark can be walking outside. He, he will come to the house and say, something's going on in the barn. They don't sound right, they're too loud. Sure enough, yeah, that's what happened. So. I did, I ran them through the handling system. I got them sorted out, but I am like, I'm just so, I'm like seriously Sandy. All right, I'm gonna clean up and put this all away, but I'll catch up with you guys another day. Thanks for being here. Oh my goodness.